Welcome back to Bad Things in History, where we invite you to join us in the hope that things are getting better over time. World War I was a terrible event. Many of those that survived it were either physically destroyed or mentally ruined, and they were the lucky ones. To survive, sometimes soldiers had to surrender. They would become prisoners of war in exchange for their lives being spared. A German Zeppelin crew tried to surrender to a British civilian in 1916. Instead of making them prisoners, he let them die. Today we are going to tell you how the crew of LZ-54 arrived at an unfortunate end. Ferdinand von Zeppelin Ferdinand von Zeppelin was born in what is today Germany on July 8, 1838. He came from a noble family and had access to all the advantages that members of the European upper class expected. He would eventually use them to create a new type of weapon. Ferdinand attended military school and joined the army in 1855. While working his way through the ranks, he was given a year off to study chemistry and engineering. He was more interested in scientific knowledge than traditional military pursuits. In 1863, he was again given a leave from the army. The United States was in the middle of a civil war which provided new and unique opportunities. Ferdinand von Zeppelin traveled to Virginia to see it for himself. He was allowed to be an observer for the Union Army so that he could learn how the United States practiced the art of war. The Union was using hot air balloons for reconnaissance. They were launched into the sky so that observers could look down upon Confederate positions. The balloons allowed the Union Army to always know where the enemy was. Ferdinand was intrigued and wanted to try this for himself. On August 19, 1863, he found a balloonist in St. Paul, Minnesota that was willing to take on a passenger. Ferdinand finally experienced flight for himself. It inspired within him the idea for a new weapon. In 1874, Ferdinand began expressing his idea about large airships, but he did little to pursue it. He described creating a rigid frame and filling it with hydrogen. The lighter-than-air vessel would then use engines to travel. Engineers elsewhere in Europe had the same idea and worked harder than Ferdinand. In 1884, the French built an airship called La France and demonstrated the idea could work. Ferdinand began petitioning his government for money to create airships for Germany. He was thrilled when the government responded with funds for the endeavor. But the first version of Ferdinand von Zeppelin's rigid airship did not work quite as planned. It was called the LZ-1 and made its first flight on July 2, 1900. After 20 minutes, it made a hard landing and experienced severe damage. Two more flights were made, but it didn't impress the government. Ferdinand kept convincing people to fund his efforts, and finally, in 1908, he had an airship that could fly safely. At least most of the time. It was called the LZ-4. The military was still not happy with airship technology. However, Ferdinand's business partner decided they didn't need the Army's money. In 1910, airships started to provide commercial air travel. Passengers could safely fly all over Europe. The use of Zeppelins for civilian transport continued until 1914, but as World War I began, the German military decided airships might be useful for other purposes as well. Airships in War As soon as the First World War started, airplanes began flooding the skies. For the first time, military conflict extended far above the battlefield. Countries with access to the new technology could use planes to spy on enemy positions, drop bombs, or attack other enemy aircraft. Although they were useful, military strategists soon realized that airplanes had serious limitations. Their range was limited, they couldn't carry many weapons, and they were quite easy to shoot down. These problems could be solved, but it would take time. Germany needed an answer now. On August 5, 1914, the Zeppelin Company made a proposal to the German government. 
It wanted to take the airships that were used for civilian transport and convert them for military use. These modified Zeppelins would be able to travel thousands of miles. They could also be equipped with numerous machine guns and a large cache of bombs. The German government gave their approval and provided funding. The Zeppelin company developed a new series of airships known as the Zeppelin P-Class. The first successful flight of a P-Class took place on May 3, 1915. On June 4, 1915, Germany began using Zeppelins to cross the North Sea and drop bombs on England. The first bombing run released 3,000 pounds of bombs on London. It killed seven people. The British government and its citizens were not happy about civilians being targeted. Germany didn't care. It continued sending wave after wave of Zeppelins to bomb England. In less than a year, one Zeppelin crew would pay the ultimate price for this military strategy. The Last Flight In total, the German military purchased 22 P-Class Zeppelins. One of these was designated as LZ-54. It required a crew of at least 16 people to fly it. Odo Lilla was the captain of this airship. Its first flight was on November 27, 1915. Over the next several weeks, it flew patrols over the North Sea. Odo and his crew didn't attack anybody. All they did was observe and report. The German military decided to adopt a more aggressive posture two months later. On January 31, 1916, a group of nine Zeppelins were ordered to travel to England. The airships were supposed to drop bombs on any targets of opportunity that presented themselves. Odo and the crew of LZ-54 were part of this bombing mission. Their Zeppelin launched around noon. It began crossing into England around 7.20 p.m. and soon thereafter started dropping bombs. A few buildings were destroyed in Burton. A pub was also destroyed in Tipton. Some unlucky livestock were destroyed, but the crew of LZ-54 did not kill anyone. The other Zeppelins that participated in the attack were more successful. In total, the bombing raid killed 61 people. Another 100 were injured in the bombings. After dropping their bombs, the airships soon lost sight of each other. Fog moved in over the North Sea. Rain started falling off the English coast. The Zeppelins tried to make their way back home and leave the English weather behind. The return trip was difficult. Five of the nine airships experienced engine failures. Odo and his crew were among those having engine problems. They couldn't keep LZ-54 at altitude, nor could they keep it moving forward consistently. On February 1st, around 4 p.m., the Zeppelin was seen flying low over the Dutch island of Ameland. The Dutch opened fire on the airship. It flew past the island and into the North Sea, where it fell into the ocean just as the sun was setting. Odo and the Zeppelin crew survived the crash. Some of the debris from LZ-54 was still floating. Odo and his men held on to it for dear life. Rescue Denied Odo used flares to signal for help. Early the next morning, it looked as though he and his crew might be rescued. William Martin was the captain of a fishing trawler called King Stephen. The fishing vessel spent all night traveling in the direction of Odo and the crew. Once they arrived on scene, William could see that there were 16 people in the water. The only thing keeping them from drowning was the small amount of floating debris that remained. One of the crew spoke perfect English and asked William if he would rescue them. William decided that, no, he was not going to save the Germans. They pleaded for their lives. The German Zeppelin crew promised they would be his prisoners and wouldn't try to take over the ship. Some of them even offered large sums of money if William would just get them out of the freezing water. William Martin ordered his trawler to return to England. The Germans were left to their fate. And as the English ship disappeared into the distance, bad weather began threatening the Zeppelin crew. The crew of LZ-54 knew that their pile of floating wreckage would soon sink to the bottom of the sea. Odo and his men wrote messages for their family and German military leaders. These letters were placed into a bottle and thrown into the ocean. 
The bottle was found by Swedish fishermen six months later. It contained a final report from Odo which said, With fifteen men on the top platform and backbone girder floating without gondolas in approximately three degrees east longitude, I am attempting to send a last report. Engine trouble three times repeated, a light wind on the return journey delayed our return and, in the mist, carried us over Holland where I was received with heavy rifle fire. The ship became heavy and simultaneously three engines broke down. 2 February 1916 towards 1 o'clock will apparently be our last hour. Anger and Joy when William Martin returned to port, he told the Royal Navy about his encounter with the Zeppelin crew. The Royal Navy searched for Odo and his men, but never found them. The German Navy also tried to find the lost airmen, but the only thing they located was a discarded fuel tank. The story of LZ-54 and its dead crew soon spread around the world. Public opinion was divided on whether William was a hero or a criminal. Even within England, nearly half of the people didn't agree with his actions. For those that did agree with William, they said he was right to not believe the German promises. Putting the safety of his own crew first was the most heroic thing William could have done. Attitudes in Germany were, unsurprisingly, completely opposed to William's actions. His failure to render aid was considered a war crime, but the German people would never have a chance to enact vengeance. A little more than a year after letting the Zeppelin crew die, William Martin would meet his own end. On February 24, 1917, he passed away from heart failure. Germany continued using Zeppelins to bomb England for several more months. However, the aircraft were plagued with technical problems. Constant engine failures resulted in the expensive Zeppelins being lost. Also, the English were getting better at shooting down the airships. By 1917, Zeppelins were no longer used as a weapon of war. It would turn out that those who accused William Martin of being a war criminal were probably right. In 1964, a journalist began researching the event. He interviewed two surviving members of King Stephen's crew. They said that William had ordered the fishing trawler into a forbidden zone. The reason they were able to find the Zeppelin crew is because they were fishing illegally. After returning to port, William gave the Royal Navy a false location for the crew of LZ-54. He didn't want to admit to authorities that he was breaking the law. Had William Martin been honest, it's possible the German airmen could have still been rescued. The German military never really got over the loss of Odo and his crew. In 1916, a series of medals which displayed the shameful event were commissioned. And in 1944, Nazi propaganda continued to use the fate of LZ-54 to promote hate against England. Ultimately, nobody was ever punished for letting the Zeppelin crew drown. Were the crews of Germany's Zeppelins responsible for the civilians they killed? Or were they just following orders? More to the point, did Odo and his crew deserve to drown in the ocean for dropping bombs on England? Tell us what you think in the comments below. If you made it this far, then surely you have an opinion. Also, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you liked this episode. Sooner or later, we'll probably make something else that entertains you. If you've been watching our channel for a while and actually do enjoy it, please consider becoming a patron. Links to that and merchandise are in the video description. Thank you for watching Bad Things in History.